on the newsletter is um, is deducted from uh, is deducted. So it's with the new uh, residents finally on the list of people to get a newsletter to. It's six hundred. It is three hundred a piece. Six hundred dollars. I'm rounding up a little bit. Six hundred dollars a month to do the newsletter. So uh, it's about one third postage, two thirds. Uh, is the uh, construction, paper, printing, folding, tabbing, et cetera. So uh, they're, they're still debating it. And meanwhile, I'm still pushing ahead uh, as chair of the newsletter, pushing ahead with it, uh, assuming that we're continuing like this. But um, if, I don't know if, uh, if uh, the mayor, if you've gotten any kind of had any discussion with the uh, Monica, the, the chair, uh, the um, officer, right? So I don't, I don't know. Well, I, I, you know, we're gonna start working on the next newsletter, which is April, but uh, I, I just don't know if we're gonna get uh, pushed back next week about, you know, maybe we should just skip April. Now, obviously, that's not a good situation for uh, the village if. The MPCA says they want to skip. So, uh, and the bigger picture here is that it, if if MPCA, it depends on on your how do you look at what is the newsletter for, and how do they look, people look at it, and and six hundred is a lot. If the village were to say, you know, one of the things that we could do is say, well, the village will will, will orchestrate the newsletter, and when when MPCA has something they want to put in the newsletter, they would, it would be like an advertisement, which they would pay for the ad depending on the size, and it would go in the newsletter um, so that they could have the relief of not always having a, to pay for it when they don't feel like they have anything to advertise. Because they, uh, not everyone feels this way, but the, the current officers in general seem to feel like if they're not posting a new event, why bother? Um, and they, they're, I'm not this seeing, they don't seem to see a value in just the human interest articles and stuff like that that are on that side. Um, but I think, so I, I think in terms of the village side of things, um, you know, I, Obviously, I personally think there is a value to communicate with the residents on a monthly basis and to keep touch somehow. So, um, and to, uh, I, I think that's an important piece, but I don't know if, um, I mean, I know everyone in the community doesn't agree because I'm sure there's people that don't read it, but uh, I wondered from the, from your all perspective, how important do you think it is for the village to touch base in the form of a newsletter on a monthly basis with the residents. Opening the floor. I'll speak last, you guys go. Um, I think we should figure out a way to post it digitally. I know people like the paper copy. I think we should print off, I don't know, the first month, 50, maybe a hundred of them. Wait, wait, that's a good point, Mark. Could we back up because that's, what I'm, I'm talking about is more philosophically, yes, I, I agree with what you're saying. No, that needs to be part of the conversation. But in terms of your, you're trying to, I think, address the cost. And what, what I just wanted to back further up and address the desire, you know, to have a monthly news communication. Yeah, is good. And I can understand why MPCA doesn't necessarily want to have a monthly thing because they don't have monthly events to talk about or monthly things they need to do. And what about the village? Yes, the village has more of a need to do a monthly newsletter and, and let the villagers know the comings and goings and whatnot. Okay, and uh, on that, do you, do you feel like the, the, the one page that we have now, do, do you feel like it's adequate in addressing that need or do you feel like more, a little more space would be desirable to get back to some of the things we used to do, like the uh, mayor's court or police information or et cetera? Or do you think the one page, um, 
Do you think it cramps our style at all in terms of trying to communicate with the village? I think the 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 four pages essentially, because you have you know your your two pages front and back is enough. I'm not sure for what you're saying because remember I've only been in the village for like three years. Um, you're saying that we used to do like police reports, like the like they do in the the Columbus paper. So and so was in mayor's court for speeding, and so and so was. I don't. That's well, no. Uh, I think what yeah what well again uh, it's what people think. It, it was basically in this area of Cleveland Avenue there was a disorderly conduct. Dis, intoxic, I'm just reading off this one intoxication. Um, while at the two, 2500 block of Wildwood at 856 on the 26th, there was a domestic dispute and theft reported. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think we need to put police reports in the weekly news in the monthly newsletter. Okay, but but okay, so the, basically, you understand MPCA's position, and you also believe that somehow, either either both paper and or electronically, somehow we should be doing something. The village should be doing something in terms of communicating on a monthly basis. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I would agree with that. And uh, I mean, theoretically, the purpose of communication by the village government is to inform the residents of what their government is doing. And, you know, to put it just real basically. And, um, uh, I, you know, lots of commercial companies are offering people an option of whether to do something by hard paper or electronically. I don't know if we're geared up to do something like that, where we could, you know, put the newsletter on the, uh, on our website and then, you know, limit the mailing to people that, uh, don't use computers. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about that. Right. So you, but, but do you believe that, uh, it's, it's important for the village to, communicate on a monthly basis? Well, it's hard to say monthly. Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I suppose there has to be some regularity to it. People look forward to that. Uh, monthly sounds pretty right on to me. There may not be a lot to report on a monthly basis. Well, and, and that is the, uh, the thing. The thing is, is, is I, I think, uh, and again, this is an a matter of opinion, but I think the village, uh, depending on how you look at what the village should be doing or what the village could be doing um, or wants to do. So the the inside of the uh, the newsletter now has a meet the neighbor. Uh, we, we inserted a meet the neighbor currently and some other topical thing of interest or maybe something someone was chatting about on Facebook that we turned into an article. Um, and that's more of a, what will, I guess in the newspaper business, you might call a human interest. So I guess my question would be also, is there, uh, is, do we think it's worthwhile because it, again, it's a matter of uh, that additional folding out and having that page is to add those, are those human interest stories also important to, uh, and for the village to want to do, or uh, is that just superfluous? I, I think the human interest is, you know, really basically a way to keep the community in touch with each other, as well as, you know, the government informing them on what's going on. Um, there are a lot of good human interest stories. Seems to me like a lot of, some of that could be, if we had a way, method, you know, that could be put on the website doesn't have to be in hard copy because that requires photographs a lot of times and sometimes interviews with people and things like that. I don't know how we'd go about that. People well, could submit things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but basically, so what you're saying is that you like the idea of the village also touching on the human interest areas, not just the mayor signed a check for $10 for pools today. You would like something more than that. So, uh, Mark, what do you think? Uh, no, I, you know, I like some of, I mean, I don't always, you know, care about those, but I really think since part of what this newsletter is and part of what um, 
makes Minerva Park special is that sort of community feeling, putting little soft human interest stories in there is a good idea. Okay. That sort of seems right up the the uh, the village's alley. Okay. Okay. And Mayor? I'm going to try to not get off topic, so yell at me when I do. Yeah, I please think, try to stay on topic because you know you, you tend to talk long again and we run out of time. So <laughs> it will always be about the newsletter. Um, but here's what to answer the first question do I think that the village should do this on a monthly basis? Absolutely. I think being in there like I am, again, we get the phone calls. Um, if our newsletter hasn't gone out on time, we do get phone calls. Um, they want to know where their newsletter is. We have had people um, emailing us, or I'm sorry, not emailing us. We have had people calling us, advising us that they don't have internet, they don't have a computer, um, but they need to make sure that they get their directory, I'm not trying to get off topic, um, and Diane is aware of that because they don't have email, they don't have that kind of stuff. And we are tending to forget that that is still a large part of our community. Just because it's, just because you like electronic doesn't mean that we do not have a large group of um, residents that we could potentially be missing. Um, with that being said, um, $600 is a very small amount to communicate to your residents. Um, and this is where I'm not gonna get too far because I'm gonna let you get there first, Diane. Um, allowing people to opt out is a nightmare. And to answer Joe's question, he said, I don't know if we have the Re, I don't know if you use the word resource or the technology or exactly what you said. I was trying to think about what you said. Um, my answer to that question is absolutely not. Um, I think, you know, when you start allowing people to opt out of a print copy, you could potentially be missing a resident with some very valuable information. Um, I would never remember to go check the website for the April newsletter because it should hit about the fifth. Um, people change email addresses. We know that. You know, my husband lost, couldn't get into his email, so he created a new one. If that's where the newsletter's going, do you think he's going to remember to call you and tell you that he got a new email address? Because you're not on the top of his list, I promise you that. Um, so I just think it's a, I think it's going to be a natural disaster. This is our number one way we know we are getting information to our residents. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. If you want an electronic copy, I think you should be able to get one. And to answer the question, it is absolutely on our, on our website. Um, but just don't forget, if you opt out at an address, who's going to opt in that address or know that there's a newsletter that they're missing? How are we going to find that address when you move that you aren't getting a newsletter and a new resident could be there for two years before somebody realizes there's a new resident because we have rental properties. I don't want to go into all that. It's a train wreck. This is our number one way of communicating to our residents. And you, if you, we, here's what I will say. We have it budgeted. There is absolutely no way in this world I will fight tooth and nail to keep this newsletter, period, end of story, at least for my term. I will fight to keep the newsletter because I know how important it is to residents and I'm warning you on that. Well, I sure hope I didn't imply that we should. No, have I don't think anybody did. I just, no, nobody did. And, and I'm all for electronic copies. I think if people want to opt in, but that doesn't mean you're not going to get a print copy in the mail. And I understand right. that, I understand it's a waste of money in some people's minds. And in my mind is missing a house is not for, uh, I'm gonna move on, um, but that this is one topic I will fight tooth and nail to make sure that every single resident is delivered a newsletter every single month, want it or not, because they might open it up and find something that they actually are interested in. Um, and now what we do inside the newsletter, I'm open, I'm definitely open. I'm also open for if MPCA is not going to join with us, can we do advertisements to help offset some of the costs? You know, I, I don't know any of that stuff and I am so open for all of that. Um, but I think delivering something into everybody's mailbox, I am here to say, I will fight tooth and nail to make sure that that happens through mine because I feel like that is my number one form of communication. If nothing else, I can say, you know what? It was in the newsletter and you were delivered that. And that's all I have to say. Keep going. I have, no, I have no disagreement with that. I, I think it should be universal, complete coverage. Yeah. And again, I think giving people an electronic copy is just, and I think it's great because I think it's another way that it might capture more people.
Um, I know I get a thousand newsletters from every travel uh, travel board in the world and I don't read that stuff. I get so much in my email. I would never, I, I'm never, I delete them, but I, I subscribe to them, but I never. Well, I, I was thinking more specifically, like not uh, eliminating the newsletter and the hard copy, but maybe adding it to the website. Oh, it's on the website. On the website, Joe. Yeah. It's, it's on, on the website. website. It's, it's always, yeah. it's really I should good look at the website out. more often. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I think that is, in terms of communication, not to get off topic, I think that is something where we need to can't we need to, to work on that. First of all, we have to make people want to go to the website, and then, but we need to talk it out. We need to drive drive people to the website, and then when they get there, we need to have something that's worth looking at. If if that's what a goal, if that's a goal, if it's not, it's not. So, um, it is just a village web, website, and they tend to be boring. So. Ours is at least tidy now. At least it's tidy. I really like that. So um, anyway, uh, I will say thank you, Mayor. I really, I, I'm excited to hear that because I, I, I think it's really important too. So um, if, uh, yes, yeah, so we are looking at, I, I don't know about the split with MPCA, but we are looking at, uh, we do have someone that's helping uh, me with advertising and um, he is, uh, we're, we're, going to try to the thing is is you can't you can't get good advertisers solid advertisers except for i mean more than the business card things unless you're guaranteeing them that that newsletter is going out right. 121 households every month you have to be able to say that and and it has to be right and if you can do that and if if we have the guarantee from the mayor that that that'll happen then i think we can definitely get advertisers to offset some of the costs. Now we don't want to take up a whole page right. I think because right. that it takes a yeah, it's, right. but a half a page on the inside and then whatever else on the outside. Um, we could definitely uh, do a feature article advertiser um, right. and, and in an issue and take that space and um, at least at least uh, I think we could get to I think we can get to and we got to warm people back up again to to that we're really gonna do this. So really gonna be consistent, but we ought to be able to do uh, around $200 offset once we get going. And I think that's just it. I wouldn't wanna step on MPCA's toes if they continue to proceed and do theirs every single month. I mean, and, and I, I would say this, I, I wouldn't try to change you know, do anything, you know, do anything that would offset the, you know, change their costs and where we're at right now or anything like that. I wouldn't want to add pages. I like, I, I would, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But I, yeah, I feel like if we end up doing this on our own, because the next part to the whole MPCA, and I don't want to call it a breakup because we're not, you know, I think there's probably a fair way to say this and a fine line to say this, but I don't think the village should be spending $600 and letting them piggyback off of our discount um, I, I think at that point, if they want to do every other month, they should be doing their own and we should go ahead and let them do their own. And we would do our own with our own advertisers and do our thing that way. Um, I don't know your feelings towards it, but I just feel like, I guess yeah. it would help them, but I feel like it would be more of a train wreck of every other month. It would, it would just would get confusing. I think for residents as to why it's like this and why we don't have all of this stuff in here and you know, we don't like them. We don't like the newsletter every other month or every month, every other month it's boring um, type thing because they don't have MPCA stuff in there. And so I think it would be confusing for residents to understand that. So at that point, I think it would really just be a village newsletter every month and then let MPCA do their own thing. You know, we did it because it, it worked seamlessly last year um, and they need to make I, their decision. Yeah, I, I think that, well, as far as I'm concerned, I think I think we're we're getting it out. We're getting it out, out on time, and continuing as if they wanted to continue uh, as is, I'm fine with that. Exactly. But if they if they don't want to continue, that what I'm saying is they can, they could they can also choose to, to do an occasional newsletter on their own, sure, uh, right. if they wanted to. But we could also allow them to be if they wanted to advertise an event. Let's say the mm -hmm. Sarah's Art in the Park, if they. Right. If they wanted to, just because we're selling ad space, um, 
it would be cheaper um, if, if they did a $50 or $100 ad in the village newspaper and it, and it looked like an ad from the community. So it, would, it would looks a good idea. It's a really good idea. Then they could do that or they could choose to just say, no, we're just going to do a newsletter. So, um, but, but it would be a choice and they would just be like they were advertising. We would give them a choice if they wanted to spend less money or they didn't have quite enough to right. build one of their own, then they could, it would be a choice. I'm open for all the suggestions. I, I think the only thing I, I don't want to debate is whether or not we're going to send one out every month. And other than that, I'm so great. open. Yeah, I'm, I really am. I think trying all to right. make it easy for MPCA to, I want them to be able to, I, I just think it would be very difficult for us, confusing to the residents and difficult for inns keep trying to figure out if they're waiting for stuff. Like at that point, I think it needs to be separate, but yeah, adding, adding, um, ads or something like that. I mean, I want to be able to be there to support them. I wouldn't have an issue, you know, even for free putting their stuff on, you know, just on like a basic little calendar. If we had like our own little calendar of events, you know, and started doing sure. something like that, just like Easter egg hunt. Now I wouldn't go into detail, but just like a little calendar of events and having, but again, I would, you know, I think everybody knows that I, I really do want to support them, but when it becomes confusing, I think that's where we, we have to say, eh. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see how the, the meeting goes next week. I, I don't right. know. I, I'm uh, all right. So, so that's, that's great. So now in terms of uh, uh, the newsletter, I don't know uh, if uh, Mark and Joey, you have looked at the last, we've done three now, January, February, two, two, we're on, we're on three, we're on the third one. We're on the, okay. So no. we've done a couple, We've done a couple now. If you've had a chance to look at them, can you give me any feedback about um, what you've seen that you like or you or you don't like or what you'd like to see? Fill the space. Uh, it seemed to have fine information in there. Um, you know, the chocolate covered bugs and the meet your neighbor and the we don't have much of a speeding problem, so settle yourselves down. Tiffany went and grabbed hers. Mine's somewhere around here. I can't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, on the uh, on the in the old green guy that we did, we we had uh, the only other thing we had was uh, we did a, a financial thing. I think Joe, you were at one time saying that certain uh, residents would like a little more financial information. Can you be more specific about that? Well, um, <clears throat> that's just comments that I got from some people that pay a lot of attention to what we're doing, you know, in the community. And uh, the, the kind of what they said was uh, financial was last. They were saying they'd like to know more about scheduling and planning. And, um, I know there's people that have more of an interest in that than others. Well, if, if uh, okay, well, let's just put it this way. The, um, in terms of, of setting up space, of course, some months are have more, more information, less room than others. But if either of you, or if either of you can think of something you'd like to have recurring either monthly or quarterly, uh, some kind of monthly or quarterly update on some something in the village, whether it's uh, planning and, and maybe a planning, because the mayor talks about planning, or do you, do you, see, I, I don't tend to read your report all the way through, uh, Tiffany, because, you know, I've been, I'm in so many meetings, I just, I know, uh, but, but, you know, uh, do you, tend to cover planning and zoning or is that an area of opportunity for us to um just as an fyi the only thing i talked about this month in my mayor's report was westerville city schools has started the process for building the new middle school so yes um i do try to hit anything and everything that i feel like might trigger people and i don't mean it like that trigger people to like have a conversation like um or at least again, I think one of the big ways that I use the newsletter is so I can say it was in the newsletter. 
Um, so when I've had people ask questions, we didn't know that there was a new school coming. This is probably since January of last year. I, I don't want to exaggerate, but go through and you're probably going to see Westerville City Schools between the elementary and middle school mentioned at least three times, if not four. Um, so yes, I do use it for that reason. And I don't want to make it sound like I'm trying to throw it in people's faces. But I do think that is the very the most valuable place where we can put things that typically residents are most interested in, something that's gonna change a large um, avenue. I mean, we did talk about the pool quite a bit, just, you know, we're getting a new baby pool because again, 50% of the people couldn't care less. Um, but there are people that are, you know, they really wanna know where their money's being spent. Having these new schools is gonna be a lot of traffic. The basketball court has generated a lot of topic, whether good, bad, or indifferent. Um, so I try to talk about, um, the big things that are going on. I will promise you the lake conversation has been in my report again, probably no less than four or five times and sewer no less than four or five times. I typically don't use the mayor's report as a fluff thing, like, you know, whatever. I've done it once and that was really to fill space. And it was just, you know, more about like the end of year, um, you know, happy holidays type things and reach you know, trying to tell everybody how wonderful our administration is because they really are. But normally it's not really any fluff. It's more straight to the point about projects, planning and zoning type things, and that's it. I mean, I really do just try to hit sewers, lakes, pools, Westerville schools, basketball court, like the big things like that. What's coming? Um, the building has been mentioned numerous times. Um, so yeah, I, I would say yes. And real quick, just on the website, because I thought, oh, I don't have my paper copy. I'll go to the website and get it. Might not be um, there yet. Well, last, not at all, last November and December aren't in the 220 archive, the 2020 archive yet. Okay. And only January has been posted for 2021. And again, this is where I tell you guys, and I think I said this last night, I can't remember if I said it to finance or who I said, it might have been planning and zoning. Um, I will let her know that because again, this is Lisa's first oh, yeah. this not is even the full month yet. So who used to do it to the new person. Yeah, that yep. makes that makes perfect sense, but I wanted Absolutely. to get it written down so we could do the reminder. Absolutely. And some of those get pushed into the archive and then, you know, twenty years from now people go like, What the heck were those guys doing that they left that for a month? Does anybody know if they have a copy of Diane? Would you happen to have one of November, December? I don't know that I have one. I might just have to go through Becky's old emails. Because uh, you wouldn't have an electronic copy, would you? November and December. Um, let me check. Okay. Um, see if you because, because when I when they were transferring the stuff to me, they probably gave me a couple of samples. So okay. um, I might have them. Okay. It's. I, I know I have the. I mean the well. I guess January was the first one I did. So that was the Festival of Delight okay. results and things like okay. that. So, but I remember seeing uh, seeing the November and December um, and I would have probably seen them electronically, but I'll, I'll double check that. Um, if not, um, I, you know, um, I could probably approach uh, Jean. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, keep a I keep a file of every uh, newsletter that I've received since I moved to the village. <laughs> uh, well, a, if you if need you them. Can, if you can scan them into a PDF, we could probably post it that way, except yours okay. aren't in, in color. You know, they're not quite as nice in color, but at least we could get the worst case scenario is we get, we would need to scan them to, and create PDFs. Paula them. might even have, I, I guarantee between Jean. Yeah, Paula has husband, it. I, I just wanted, didn't want to bother her first. Okay. Yeah. I, no, let me I'm see if it's really on. Busy. We have <laughs> Becky's old email. So, it, I mean, she has to have it. So yeah, we just, we so. just have to go back and get it. Exactly. So I will do, thank you, Mark. I will make sure those get up there tomorrow. Um, are, are you looking for, uh, to see a copy of November? They're no, not uploaded they're, to the website. To post it to the website. We want to post it. Yeah copy to the website. So we need a PDF. And you know, when we, when Paula gives us from Inkscape the printer, when the printer gives us the paper copies, of course they're black and white, but she always gives us a color one uh, so that we it, can post one in color. <coughs> oh, 
Okay. Um, did we did we lose you, Mark, or did you? I guess we lost Mark. Uh, you did not lose me. The wife just came home. She was up visiting her new niece who got born the other day. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you did not lose me. I was close just... enough that I could hear you saying, did we lose you? <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, yeah we'll that, all... Joe has all the copies of the newsletter on file since he moved here. So, so anyway, uh, I think baby news is always uh, important. So yeah. yeah. Hopefully you've got some good picks. Um, all right. Um, okay, so newsletter. Okay, I wanted to let you know, though this is, uh, I, I am, uh, I, I mentioned the mayor. I, I, I've done, I've done that. I volunteered to do the directory this year. And now we have this wonderful Excel spreadsheet of 800, 821 residents. And not all, there's about, 10 that are not are questionable in terms of if there's anybody really living there or not, but uh, 821. And um, it's really kind of exciting because uh, the street reps went around and got email addresses. So we have, not that people answer their email because a lot of times they don't, um, but we got uh, about 300, uh, let's see, about 300 people gave us their email addresses. So, uh, you know, there's uh, other opportunities perhaps to how to communicate with people. So it's a good, it's a good start for a, a database. I just hated, it was an awful wreck. And uh, Shelly Biba actually was, uh, went to the uh, auditor site and kept downloading real, real estate information in order to get names to put in this directory. Because uh, we've had so many new people and people changing over. Um, and so it's at the printer now. I'm hoping they're getting ready to. It's, a, it's kind of a challenge because it has to be, uh, there was a tight budget on, on the number of pages it could be. So it had to be shrunk down a bit, but this is it. And I have, I have a printed copy, not, not stapled or anything. It has to be black and white unless Paula, I think Paula might actually cave and uh, Inskeep might actually do a, a color co cover, but I'm not sure. I'm just on the fence about that. But anyway, I know that we are asking people if they want electronic or whatever. But I guess my point is on this is when I'm asking people right now if they want electronic or paper, it's giving us an opportunity to, to ferret out some of those people who who really want to have paper. And these are also people that um, are usually um, not necessarily but more senior people. And uh, I think getting this subset of people and finding out who there are could help us as a community, um, as a village kind of work, learn how to communicate best with individual residents. And so when we, uh, so we can not neglect people who don't get on Facebook, just so we're not neglecting that group of people. So anyway, that's, that's my personal thing on communication is communicating people uh, uh, the way they wanna be communicated with will, will bring the community together a little bit, a little bit better, so. So anyway, I have this Excel spreadsheet with all the names, addresses, and for those people who wanted to provide phone numbers, phone numbers, and not everybody did, and email addresses. And this, uh, uh, whether they're paid members of MPCA or not, which is an MPCA thing. So that should be uh, uh, getting out to people. So the electronic copy is already ready. So when people say they email me and say they want the electronic copy, I, I send it to them. So I am doing that. Um, but we are going to get a, a number printed. And uh, so we have the paper, paper copies. Um, so that's out there. But the village is what I'm saying. We've got the spreadsheet. The village could use the spreadsheet in, in various ways. So I, I appreciate uh, that Tiffany wants to continue to mail an and uh, my, my husband disagrees with you, John. She, he, he actually said everybody should get a piece of paper that they can decide whether to toss, keep, or read. 
and uh, that's what we should be doing. So he agrees with, with you, Tiffany, on that one. So yay! <laughs> so so anyway, uh, but if if we want to, in terms of other types of communication, it is uh, the website has um, the ability to. Uh, there's two things. It, it has the ability to create forms. Right now, we're only creating one form uh, that I can find. And uh, that form uh, is a, um, I'm gonna be out of town. Can you, can you check and drive by my residence for me? It's a form, it's an, a, it actually looks like an identity form, but it's a form. And what we could do in terms of trying to keep the uh, name and address stuff fresh, I'm not saying it's not a perfect solution, but we can create a form. This is according to the vendor. We can create a form uh, that's a self-service form that people can go, residents go in, can go in and update their form and, and it allows them to put name, address or change name, address or whatever. And that, that creates a database in the cloud, which is what I much prefer than having it on my lap, laptop. Um, so it's cloud-based and you can download either Excel or a CSV file if you want to do additional work on it. So that's one. And that wouldn't cost a, the village any money, just the time it would take to, to create the form. Um, the second thing, which, which I think is a good idea, I'd like to just, I'm not asking for a yes or no at this point, just to think about that. And the other thing that we can do is for... I think it's 600 bucks, we can uh, have a subscribe. And this is what Mark, you and, and Joe were talking about. We can have a subscribe. So you can, uh, it's, a, it's a self service again. So the person, a resident goes in and puts in their email address. And then what we have is we have a form that has check boxes. And it says, anytime you send out a newsletter, notify me or send me an electronic copy. Uh, anytime you're going to um, talk about the municipal pool and there's any ordinance or whatever, then they check a box. And then when something's posted to the website that's related to the pool, that subscriber gets a notice to go and take a look. So, it's a, a way of communicating, I think, that for, for and a self subscribe so we don't care if they do or they don't. It, but is it gives a, a month, a hundred dollars a year, or what is it? It's a sixty dollars, six hundred dollar. I think it's one time, but maybe it's once once a year. But it's not once a month. Yeah, uh, thing. We should do that. That sound like a does sound like fun. I mean, I think that. You know, uh, and then you can we can decide what we want to link to, and if it if you post it to the website, and you create that when you're creating the form, you say anytime I post anything with this, so it, notify this person. Oh, well, we could have a notification uh, application. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds like a good idea to me. You know, the, yeah, the, the thing is, is if we, our obligation then is to make sure that we're updating the website on a timely basis and uh, that's about it. And then, to, yeah, I don't know, at some point you might have to clean out old junk emails or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, what do you think, Mayor? I agree. I, yeah, I'm, I like the idea. Okay. So uh, I will contact the uh, customer service rep that gave me the information to contact. I'll contact him, see what else, if they have any other information to share. Okay. It's very simple. It's, I, they don't have a single, they have these little, you, not YouTube, but like YouTube videos saying, here's how you do this part. And then right. it has, they don't have ones that go big picture, here it is. Otherwise, I, I tell you where that is, but they didn't have a big picture one. They just have pieces of parts. Right. And you're, you know, you're trying to envision what the final thing looks like. But, but anyway, so I'll get with the customer as the next step. I'll get with the customer service okay. rep and see about that. And then just, and just as FYI, out of curiosity, if, is the notification an email, a text? It's is, email. It's just email. email. Okay. Yeah. 
And then my other, my only thing for that is, um, we only have X amount budgeted for the year for the newsletter. So we would need to do a supplemental appropriation when we get to that point, if council wants to approve it, um, because we would, we just need to do that because I don't have any money in there. I won't have enough money in there. So, and that's just for you guys. So yeah, you guys will just all have to be on board for it. Is that the supplemental appropriation for the newsletter printing or just what? No, what we should have. I'm assuming we didn't lower the newsletter. I hope we didn't lower the newsletter um, based on, you know, projections that we were expecting. Um, it is what it is. Uh, no, but for the newsletter or for the website, it was X amount of dollars for the next four years or whatever. So we, okay, we, didn't put anything. Okay. Nowadays, we, we did, we did do a little cushion, but I don't think we did it up to 600. I do remember oh. doing a little cushion per year in case there was, you know, something, but I, we, I can verify, but I am assuming I normally don't bump up that high, that much higher. I think it was probably four or 500. Okay. So I'm just, you know, and if you guys are all on board, it's your thing. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm totally fine with it. So as long as, you know, you guys got four votes we're we'll just have to do it to bump up and I'll, I can verify. I mean, I'll make sure Leah doesn't have enough money in there to cover a $600 increase, but I'm concerned that there won't be a $600 okay. increase in there. Okay. All right. All right, and meanwhile, I'll get you that information. So, yeah. um, okay. Um, okay, so that was the, the second item. Uh, and it is 743. So uh, is there anything else at this point that we want to talk about? Do we wanna spend 15 minutes just talking about what else uh, does anyone have a specific idea about um, communications in the village, uh, any particular I, a pet idea you have for some new or some revised or some, I don't know. People, people have heard me say this before. I keep reading research, especially some uh, significant stuff that came out of Harvard that says that residents, communities prefer to, uh, you know, have an audience centric type of uh, communication as opposed to uh, real dry government reports. And, uh, you know, that's simply kind of more of an angle uh, of how to say things and what it is you say. I, know, I, I totally agree with you. And I think, I think if uh, going forward, if, if, for example, if, if Tiffany has something, well, I think one of the ways to use that idea is if Tiffany in her mayor's report says something, something about the pool, then, and it, and she felt it's really important, but you know, it's buried in her report. Maybe somebody doesn't read that far down. Then we could have a complimentary article on the other side of the page. So uh, we could even do, I mean, I have three people that help with, with the newsletter. So, we could have one of them uh, talk to a few residents going, what do you think about that idea, that thing that's gonna happen? Uh, what's your opinion on that? Do a little resident opinion piece or hit it from a different angle uh, or a more folksy kind of, or a conversational type basis. Uh, if we had the ability, we could use links and you know, where uh, something's mentioned could say for four, more information you know, and then link something to the website. That's true too. That's always a good idea. It is always a good idea. But I, again, I think that the hard part about that is then you have residents feeling like they can't get the information because they don't because have it. They don't have it. Yeah. So, I mean, and just be careful when we do that because we do for uh, like, I also am one that forgets. And, I, and Diane, I'll be the first to say it when we were talking about, you know, like the different options for people when they call in and, you know, there's different things that, I forget because I am now, I want, I want a directory in print. Like, I don't want to have to go to my phone and scroll through and like, I just want to be able to pull out a book, open it up. And I, like, I don't, I am still old school when it comes to that. Um, but everything I do is on the computer. I mean, I'm on the computer and on my phone 24, 23 hours a day, probably. I mean, that's just, so I forget that there's people like it still blows my mind. Even my mom's on the computer. So, you know, it blows my mind when to hear people say, I don't have an email address 
or I don't have internet. And I'm like, right. huh? Right. Um, but we have more than one. We have probably more we than we do. So I just, I don't want them to feel like they're missing some big story. Um, and, and the other part to that, and this is the thing that you will hear more than anything. And this again, shocks me. I don't have people that have internet. <laughs> I don't have Facebook. And all I want to say is, oh man, I just wish <laughs> for one week, I just want to go without Facebook. Um, and it's a habit, I get it. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are on, that have email, that have all of that, that got no interest in the drama. Um, right. So again, I think we refer a lot to Facebook because everybody knows, where do I go to post well, something quick? Right, right. And that's why that's why I try to look at Facebook to see if there's anything, if, if there's like 64 replies on something, right. it, if it's, it, if there's that much interest, then I, I would like I like to fold it in on the newsletter side for those people who don't don't have Facebook and didn't get a chance to. That's a good you know, idea. That that's that's certainly a goal on, on right for us to and do. And I, I think the yeah. other part for the newsletter is I do feel like the Debbie Downer every once in a while when I do have to put things like when there's a level one snow emergency or greater. Um, my goal, you know, once we get past where we're at right now, but. A lot of people got away with a lot of stuff over the last year and meaning parking in the street, not moving their car, absolutely refusing to move their cars out of the street. Um, you know, there's, there's giving people a little bit of slack is one thing, but um, things like this are going to be a fair warning. They're going to be posted in the newsletter and then the officers are going to be allowed the ticket. I mean, there's certain things that are, you know, that are safety issues, problems, concerns. We have a lot of new residents that don't know the rules and regulations. And this is just more of like an educational type thing over the next couple months. Um, we're going to do the warnings again about the high grass. Like, and again, that's why the newsletter is so important to me. Um, if people choose not to read it and throw it in the trash, like you're aware, um, that's on them, but this is kind of going to be one of your, like, this is your warning and take it because we're not going to do this, you know, oh, you know, no, I mean, it's, there are people that are upset that people were not moving their cars. There are people that are upset last year, obviously with high grass, we're not going to play the game of letting people get away with it for a long time. It's, these are going to be your warnings. This is going to be, you know, we're going to ask nicely the first time and, and then unfortunately, because as much as I like to be nice about it, um, I get twice as many complaints from other people that are tired of it. We do, uh, this is totally off topic, this is a streets discussion, but with, uh, with the snow and the car, you know, you, you get one or two along the length of the street, no parking during snow emergency, right. violators will be towed and people will only park during a snow emergency once. And you're, you are correct. And that is actually what we are discussing. We've already gotten the signage and we are going to be bringing that to, um, because it's probably something we don't have enough to do in the entire area and the entire village um, without coming to you guys first, because it's going to be pretty expensive, but just so you know, um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to say it because I walked in the new village or in the new section, and this is not necessarily, we're getting off communication. So let me hurry. We, I walked through there and I was shocked at the amount of people that did not shovel their drive, their sidewalks, which was a pure sheet of ice. And we're talking well over two, three, four, you know, two, three inches all packed down. Um, it was extremely dangerous to walk through there. Now, mind you, we didn't do ours either. And you guys know my pet peeve about that. Um, but we don't, it's, yeah, we'll, we'll discuss that later. Um, but the amount of cars that were still in the drive, in the roads that you couldn't get around. And it's horrible. It, it was, it was horrible. You're leaving it to where it's just not safe and no parking signs is needed everywhere. And it's no emergency. Do, do we have a contract with a tow company? <laughs> we do. We actually do. Um, I we figured actually, we did. <laughs> yeah, we do. All right. Well, uh, I'll say one more thing in real okay. general terms, along with the uh, audience centric idea. Uh, the research also says that attraction goes a lot further than promotion. What and that's, attraction goes a lot further than promotion okay. and getting uh, community involvement. 
whether it be the you know hard copy newsletter or the website facebook or any of it well i that's what i was thinking if we do the if we do the su subscribe and where people email in uh that's one you know the newsletter is another volunteer we could actually have one for volunteer volunteer or whatever volunteer opportunities you know email notify me whenever there's a volunteer opportunity uh, we're gonna have all of those coming up. really good really good thing to do and it's just everybody needs reminders i mean everyone is last minute people don't even rsvp rsvp to to weddings from family members anymore because they want to wait till last minute to see what else they got going on so i mean it's just the way it is so reminders and more than one type of reminder is all those things are are repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, some people can't make up their mind until they hear something six times, I think it is. So that's the marketing thing that they say. So um, anyway, yeah, communication. So it's right. called advertising clutter. <laughs> no, it, it does take six it. times for somebody to see an ad on TV for they it influences them. That's why you see the ads being played over and over and over. Over and over and over, yeah. So fortunately there's mute and there's fast forward. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> I live by fast forwarding, so. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, I think we can, we can call it a wrap uh, this time and uh, we will, uh, let's see what happens uh, as a newsletter and the, let's get the, uh, we'll get the directory out. I am, by the way, I've gotten only, uh, I have gotten people emailing the directory at mympca.org comes to me. Uh, and there are about 25 people who have responded and five, one electronic and 21 paper. That's, that's how we're, <laughs> so I'm thinking though that it's bias because the people who read the paper newsletter are also probably paper people, right? And, and other, yeah, everybody else is yeah. an email. I want, a, I want a hard copy. <laughs> and how many are we printing in this initial run? Well, I, I am waiting for the final quote. The, the, prob, the, 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 the defining factor, unfortunately, is that the MPCA has told me there's a budget of $600, and that's it. So uh, that technically would pay for 350 paper books. So uh, I I am, uh, so I'm kind of like waiting to see how this is falling out because I think the MPCA really was praying and hoping that more people would choose electronic. I think so, you know, well, paper. Every time I try and go paperless, oh, I, I have to pull out a notepad and a pencil. All said and done. Diane, I'm sorry, Mark. Books are really not that, I mean, in the big scheme of things, the booklets are like two dollars and eighty six cents mm -hmm. a piece to print. I'm just, I'm just saying, I think if you print three hundred and fifty of them, you're going to be surprised at how many you have left when everyone who wanted a paper copy got one. Well, yes, I I would agree with you that I would agree with you. That's what that's what MPCA is thinking. So I I don't know. I'm going to try to. I would love to just, it's just that Inscape is kind of like, you know, if we're, they're, they're very good to us over there, honestly. Mm -hmm. But if, if I would prefer to order a hundred at a time, but they might not like that just because it's a lot of work. So just to start them over again. But anyway, we'll see. I, I haven't uh, pulled the trigger. It's like, mm -hmm. like everybody, no one wants to make this decision. And so they're kind of leaving me holding the bag, so to speak, in terms of the number to print. But uh, anyway, we'll see, uh, you know, obviously we need to be, I wanna be practical. I hate to waste paper, um, but you know, the problem this year is that the street reps went around and the ones that talked to people said, you know, you get a, you get a directory, this $20 pays for a directory. And so there are 370 people who actually paid dues. So is, is it really an obligation? Do, they, do people really care? Were they listening? Do they care? Are they- I care and I will tell you that the phone calls that we've had care yeah. and the people that have stopped by care, the voicemail yeah. that you heard the, just the day you walked in, that's not the only one. Yeah, they do. No. I think you guys are 
completely mistaken. I think if you came down my, my street, I don't think you would get more than five that wanted it electronically and how many houses are, I, I, I don't see it. I think 90% of the people on my street would want a print copy. Now I will I get, say that- I get print copies of everything if you want mm -hmm. my, what I actually do in life. <laughs> well, you could you could email me you could email directory at, at mympca.org just to make it official but i, I am going to make it i will do it I'll right mark. now right. i have a, i have somebody that i want to ask you because they came in specifically and asked and i i just i'm curious if they're one of the ones but i don't want to say the name on here um okay. but i know someone that wants a hard copy that came in and you should have something from him because he brought in a paper or something written that he was putting in the mailbox that said he wanted a printed oh, copy. Right, right, and I, that was the original instruction as for. Okay, I didn't know. I want to make sure you got his on go that length to do that. Okay, <laughs> but I've got to get in that mailbox to see if there's anything else in there. Okay, I'll ask you about this particular person because I want to make sure he made the list because he physically came in. And you don't have a key to the MPCA mailbox, right? Right. So I'm waiting to get that to see if anybody well, actually can. Three hundred seventy of them. Three hundred. If we only have 370 people who signed up, the most we need is 370. Right. Because if you're not an MPCA member, you don't get one. Well, unless you want to pay $20 $10. and be a member, then $10, yeah. Well, $10, uh, they told people that if you want to buy one, just the directory, it's $10. So yeah, I don't know who's going to pay $10. I think one, one or two people said they would pay $10 for a directory. I, I, but I would be kind of embarrassed handing them the directory for ten dollars. I would be too. <laughs> Maybe they'll take it electronically. <laughs> fundraiser. But, but the the electronic no, the awesome. electric five dollars for a two dollar box of cookies. Come on. <laughs> the 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 uh, yeah. You have to say it's a charitable contribution. Ten bucks. It, it, it's a directory and it's a charitable. You got to say something like that because you get well, it's not worth ten bucks, but. But in the grand scheme of things, it is. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, for me, I, mean, I my contribute. time my time was was well over ten dollars a Correct. book, so, and, and Shelley's time was well yeah. over ten dollars. And book. I agree. I mean, I do agree with that. Like, I don't give my when I view it as when I give my ten dollars or my twenty dollars. I don't have kids involved. My kids have never gone to any one of the Minerva Park events. So that's not a bragging right thing, but we're just, we're busy. Like my kids are in sports year round. We're never going to go to one of those things. My kids are now older. Again, I think there were 19 kids involved in the Valentine party. Um, I think the majority of the 370 members are more, the hard part that I have, and this is, this is, we shouldn't even be talking, I'm not going to go there. Um, my view is news, you know, for the person like me, I'm not in, I'm, I'm not probably going to go to the arts thing, you know, even though I think it's a great thing for residents, I wasn't available last year. I mean, it's, it's so hard for me to do stuff like that. I do it for the simple fact that it supports the village. Um, and I like the newsletter and I like the, you know, and it helps support those events. So, um, I think that's the thing that, you know, hopefully they're, I, I know they're keeping that in mind that there are 370, uh, members, like you just said and look at how many of the kids are participating in the different, you know, holiday events and how many families are, you know, attend family fun night. And I think last year you can't judge obviously. So moving forward, hopefully they'll be able to gauge how many people are participating in certain things and how many members we have and why are they contributing? Like, what is our purpose? Right. So right. hopefully that is what they're doing because again, the majority of the residents over on this side are probably contributing um, but I will also say, I highly doubt any of them are involved in any of the activities. Maybe that's, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I'm, I'm guessing no. But I want my newsletter and I want my, I want my directory. I'm going to email you right now though. Okay. So don't hang, don't hang up. <laughs> I'm right. going to stop this and ask you about one person. I, right. I want to make sure. All right, everybody. All right. See Thanks. you.